Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we are talking about autonomous cars. So the topic of autonomous cars is something I'm super fascinated about and actually had an opportunity to chat with John from Hitachi a few weeks ago at the Shell Eco Marathon Americas. You guys can also check out a couple other videos I did on the Eco Marathon. I'll put links down in the description. Also, thanks to Shell for having me out and sponsoring this video. We talked about a whole bunch of things, but the topic that really stuck with me was the topic of autonomous vehicles and really his insight on what it's going to take to get to that next level, that full autonomous vehicle, that level five autonomy of vehicles. So I want to start off by talking a little bit about what all these different levels of autonomous vehicles are. There's actually six levels because yes, zero is included in a level. It may come as no surprise that a level zero autonomous vehicle is a vehicle that has no assistance whatsoever. When we move up to level one autonomy, that's pretty much most every vehicle on the road. So the car can do something by itself, but it's very minor and it's typically activated by the driver. So think about a vehicle with cruise control, just regular plain old cruise control as a level one autonomous vehicle. When we move into level two autonomy, that's where we're kind of at as a big scale system. So this is where the vehicle can control speed and perhaps has a lane departure assist. Not the kind that the light flashes, but where it actually turns the steering wheel and keeps you in the lane. And there's plenty of cars on the road right now that have that system. Level three autonomy is where the really high line stuff and the ones that are considered autonomous vehicles are kind of at. So in certain conditions, the vehicle can completely control itself. It can monitor traffic, it can monitor stoplights, it can monitor what's in front, behind, and on the sides. It'll also inform the driver when it's time to take control. Level four autonomy is a full autonomous car, but only in certain locations. So this could be like transit out of and to the airport or things like that, where it will function fully autonomous, but only in certain locations. Otherwise, a driver will take over on the vehicle. And then, of course, level five is 100% full autonomy. This is the kind of car that we've seen in the future movies that are set in sort of the right now times where they don't have any kind of steering wheel or anything like that. You are basically in a pod rather than a car. John and I did hit on a few other things outside of the scope of autonomous vehicles, things like sensors, things like active and semi-active suspension, about managing these systems, delivering the information, what the best system is, what kind of cameras are the best ones to use. And I think you guys are really gonna love this chat. Well, I'm John Nunley. I'm the Senior Vice President of Engineering for Hitachi Automotive Americas. Hitachi Automotive is a tier one supplier. Um, we supply everything from automotive electronics, um, engine control units to inverters, motors, and batteries for um, electrified vehicles. We do suspension, steering, all of the chassis systems, and now going into the future, we're getting into the uh, autonomous vehicle world, and that's, that's the direction we're going. So those little magic silver boxes that I always talk about, a lot of that stuff is Hitachi generated. Right. <laughs> you mentioned something that my initial thought is suspension, well, that's not electronic, but that really couldn't be further from the truth, especially right. as we go forward. What are some right. of the common suspension components that we're now not only monitoring, but basically controlling? Right, well, now the uh, direction is semi-active suspensions, which can change their damping force in real time as you uh, hit different road conditions and different driving conditions and even tune themselves to the driver. But looking into the future, you'll get into fully active suspensions with vision systems that it can look ahead and not just react to the road as it's happening, but react to the road prior to it right. happening. So if you see um, large holes or things, you can change your suspension or even right, raise you can pull the, wheel, the wheel up. Yeah. Pull the wheel up as you go into those. Uh, That's cool. Areas. I've seen some videos of that. Yeah. You know, but it's probably more animation than actual <laughs> videos where you know the car's driving down the road, the camera picks yeah. up ahead the pothole pulls the wheel up a little bit and the yeah. driver doesn't experience don't that, even that harsh it. jar. Not yeah. only that, you didn't damage your tire and you don't have a bent wheel because you hit a pothole really right. hard. Right. That's awesome. And that's the kind of technology that I think 
you know, today we're just like dipping the toe in across the yeah. automotive industry. Right. We were talking a little bit before about some of these systems and they've been around for a while, but now you're starting to see them in the everyday car mm -hmm. on the base models, you know, backup camera regulation <laughs> from like two years ago. All cars have it now. Right. And, and as we move forward, these systems, these safety systems, these comfort systems are gonna become even more common and better, faster, more reliable with less problems. Right, right. And vehicles now already have a lot of the standard equipment that you need to realize the autonomous future. To get even further, they need to you know, have more redundancy, right, more right. safety features All those built backups in, to... um, because there won't be a mechanical override when you remove the driver from it. Right. But the uh, whole autonomous vehicle stream is the recognition, cognition, and actuation. And they're all kind of happening in parallel right. and coming into these ADAS or driver's assistance systems prior to going to the fully autonomous vehicles. But there are still a lot of breakthroughs that need to happen right. before we can get there. Before you have a uh, sensing system that can sense well enough to fully control a vehicle in every environmental condition and uh, fog and rain and snow and dark. Um, these are things that are difficult for humans to do. Right. And when you turn the control over to the vehicle, you want it to be able to handle all these things because the step from level three to level four to level five autonomy is going from where the driver has some control to the driver only having control when the vehicle can't handle the conditions to the driver having no control. To their not being right. a driver. <laughs> and the most difficult one is the one where the vehicle has control all the time except when it can't handle and the conditions are too hard because then you're asking a driver who doesn't drive 99% right. of the time to only drive in the most difficult conditions. <laughs> So, yeah, the worst possible situation. <laughs> so so there's, there's a lot of thought that has to go yeah. in to doing this. So how, how do you step from where we are today to fully autonomous without crossing these really difficult areas? Yeah, and right. you know, I think for a lot of people, their, their thought is, and, and I have this feeling a little bit too, is that the technology's there, we can just do it. It's, it's a perception thing that the average consumer maybe doesn't want that. And as someone that absolutely <coughs> loves to drive, I'm all for it, which sounds yeah. counterintuitive, but mm -hmm. if someone's you know on their phone behind the wheel, I would much rather them just in a different <laughs> lane and let me do my thing. Um, right. Best guess, how far out do you think we really are from, from realizing that? Well, from vehicles that don't have steering wheels, don't have accelerator pedals and completely drive themselves, you know, it's really hard to say because not only the sensing systems that I described that have to, uh, you know, find the best suite of sensors, right. is it LIDAR, radar, mono cameras, stereo cameras, gated cameras, there's all these different technologies and we're still trying to decide which is the right technology and then to fuse all this information together and then get this huge amount of data exactly. to the control unit. Is it a central control unit? Is it distributed control in the different sensors and everything? But this amount of data is so much larger than what we're doing today right. in the vehicle. So there's still technical breakthroughs that have to happen in the sensing and the cognition side of this to really be able to get to safe autonomous vehicles. I think it's going to happen um, time-wise. You know, we, we always say 2025 to 2030 yeah. is what we're looking at. That's not what that we're far looking. away. That's not, not far away. But, That's not uh, that far away. fully well. autonomous Yeah, so vehicles, no Jetsons so. cars by before 2025 <laughs> is basically what we're talking about. So thanks so much to John for hanging out and chatting cars with me. If you guys have questions or comments, you know what to do. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube and over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. To learn more about Shell Eco Marathon Americas, including the full rules and sign up, there's a link down in the description. You can check that out. All right, everybody, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.